What does this mean? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 shocking desperate housewives moments. Did you miss me? You know I did. For this list, we'll be looking at the most surprising, heart-stopping, and yes, desperate moments from over the show's eight seasons. Having said that, spoiler alert. Did your favorite shocker make the cut? Sound off in the comments below. Number 20, Beth Dies. I don't want to mess this up. It's the most important thing I've ever done. Introduced in the show's seventh season, Beth Young was later revealed to be the daughter of the vengeful Felicia Tillman. Beth was only a pawn in her mother's plot against the villainous Paul Young. A sequence of events finds her out of a husband, out of a home, and with seemingly nothing to live for. Desperate and searching for some meaning, Beth goes to the hospital where Susan Delfino is in need of a kidney. She signs a few forms and then takes her life in front of the nurse's station. Beth's last desperate act is as tragic as it is shocking. We need some help over here! <laughs> Number 19, Plane Crash. Affairs, shootings, fires, tornadoes. A lot of things have happened on Wisteria Lane, but a plane crash wasn't on our bingo card. Turn this thing on! Somebody help! I don't know how to fly! This season 6 episode is pretty standard stuff until the last few minutes. One couple reveals their secret affair, another couple is expecting twins. Someone is about to be blackmailed over a horrible secret from their past. Then, a small aircraft plunges out of the sky and crashes right into the neighborhood's annual Christmas gathering. In just a matter of seconds, whole storylines are completely upended. Relationships are torn apart, a few characters even die. It's completely random in the way that some of the best Desperate Housewives moments are. You can run, but you can't hide! Number 18, Lynette Breaks Down. When it first premiered, Desperate Housewives promised to bring the drama, but early on, it won many viewers over with its frank depictions of how difficult parenthood can be. I love my kids so much. I'm so sorry they have me as a mother. Lynette Scarvo spends most of the early run adjusting to being a full-time housewife. At first, her newfound dependence on her son's ADHD medication just seems like a satirical joke on middle-class mums who can somehow find time to do it all. But this storyline goes from darkly funny to just dark, when Lynette crashes and ends up a crying heap on a soccer field. I used to get so upset when Andrew and Danielle were little, I used their nap times to cry. Why didn't you ever tell me this? The heart-to-heart -heart she shares with her friends probably made a lot of people feel seen. Number 17, the bomb in the detonator. Angie Boland's past as a reformed bomb expert and eco-terrorist on the run from the FBI unfolded over the show's sixth season. In the season finale, she's finally tracked down by Patrick, her ex and the leader of her former eco-terrorist organization. You got what you wanted? You gonna let us go now? Not yet. Patrick holds her hostage and compels her to make him one last bomb. With a detonator in his hand, Patrick reveals that he planted that bomb in the house with their son. Tell me where the bomb is now! It's in your house. And if you want to save our son, I suggest you get moving. But the crafty Angie turns the tables on him. Her real bomb is in the detonator in his hand. Bye bye, Patrick! With this kind of spunk and ingenuity, it's sad Angie didn't stick around for another season. Number 16, Lynette confronts Art Shepard. Now, kid, who's been good this year? Wisteria Lane resident Art Shepard is hailed as a hero, but Lynette soon comes to suspect the unassuming man living with his sister, who uses a wheelchair, might be a secret predator. Although the storyline doesn't last long, it leaves a lot open to interpretation. When Art's sister dies, and Lynette begins to be sorry for casting so much suspicion on him, his last conversation with her chills her to the bone. He all but comes out and says she was right about him. See, I always knew that I had to take care of Rebecca, so I could never let myself slip and do something that would hurt her. The most horrifying thing is, we're not actually sure if he's being honest or if he's just taunting her to get back at her for inadvertently causing his sister's death. Number 15, McCluskey Confesses. Your Honor, I, I'm, I'm not sure what we're getting from this. Well, you will in a minute, honey. 
When viewers first met Karen McCluskey, she was the archetypal nasty old neighbour. But by the end of the series, she and the other housewives had become like family. Terminally ill with lung cancer, Karen decided to do some good with the time she had left. When Brie ended up on trial for the murder of Gabby's violent stepfather, Karen threw herself under the bus for her by confessing to the crime on the witness stand. I followed him in, I picked up the candlestick, and I killed that son of a bitch. <laughs> like the best of plot twists, this one shocked us just as much as it did the characters. It was also a fitting end for a fantastic character. Number 14, Lily is taken away. Mrs. Solis. Yes? We have a court order to take the Collins baby into custody. Gabby and Carlos Solis were not always the perfect pair, but they went through a lot together over the first two seasons. What they wanted more than anything was to complete their family with a baby. Viewers watched as the couple struggled to conceive. When they were finally able to adopt a baby girl named Lily, their happiness was short-lived. Lily's mother reneged on their adoption agreement and took the baby back. Gabby's heartbroken pleading with the cops as they return the infant to her mother is something viewers aren't likely to forget anytime soon. And my husband, my husband, he sings to her. He sings. So you can't take her away. It's too late. We've already fallen in love with her. Number 13, Andrew runs over Carlos's mother. Juanita Solis never liked her daughter-in-law, and the feeling was mutual. When she caught Gabby in a compromising position with her gardener, she raced out of the house with proof, only to be run down by difficult teenager Andrew Vanderkamp. <laughs> Nothing brings a family together like vehicular manslaughter. Even more shocking is how quickly and efficiently his parents take action. Mama. A strange couple, Bree and Rex, continued their run of great parenting and hid the evidence from the police, saving their son the burden of having to be accountable for his actions. The whole storyline was peak privileged middle class nonsense, and we couldn't look away. Number 12, Catherine tells the truth. Like most of the new arrivals on Wisteria Lane, Catherine Mayfair came to town with a metaphorical closet full of skeletons. But her secret was one of the more heartbreaking and tragic ones. Dylan. I'm sorry, I had no choice. <laughs> Dylan! All is revealed in the season 4 finale, when her vengeful and abusive ex-husband holds her at gunpoint. The girl she's raising as Dylan is not their daughter. Years ago, their biological child was killed in a horrible accident. Catherine has been raising the new Dylan in her place ever since. As I looked into those big blue eyes, I knew right then she needed me as much as I needed her. It was a devastating revelation, especially given how plausible it is compared to some of the other stuff on this list. Number 11, Rex dies. Is there such a thing as tragedy of errors? George, an obsessive pharmacist, poisons Rex Vanderkamp so he can have Bree to himself. Rex finds out he's being poisoned and assumes it's Bree's revenge for his infidelity. Who prepares your meals? Many viewers were shocked that the storyline didn't end with George being found out and Bree and Rex continuing to mend their marriage. Instead, it ends with Rex accepting his fate and writing Bree a note saying he forgives her. Watching actress Marsha Cross process the news of his death as she completes her daily chores is truly something to behold. <laughs> Number 10, Felicia's Revenge. The first season's mystery involved a mysterious threatening letter, which led to Mary Alice taking her own life. After discovering that his neighbor Martha was responsible for his wife's tragedy, Paul fatally took matters into his own hands. Her sister figured out what my husband had done. So she decided to frame him for murder. As if the web of revenge wasn't enough, Martha's sister Felicia cooked up a sinister plot to fake her own death and frame Paul for her murder. After sneaking into his house, she faked a grisly murder by spilling blood all over the house and placing two of her severed fingers in his car. Paul would ultimately be arrested as Felicia went into hiding under her sister's identity, not to resurface for another five seasons. What is it? 
Put your hands where I can see them. Number nine, the tornado. As if the drama plaguing the residents of Wisteria Lane weren't enough, our protagonists sat to enjoy a tornado in the middle of the fourth season. Get in the house! Now! Just as several storylines were coming to a climactic head, the disaster shook up everything. The tornado would cause the deaths of Victor and Sylvia, while also rendering Carlos blind, destroying Bree's house, and indirectly causing Catherine to learn of her husband's affair. The episode's ending left the fates of Lynette's entire family and Ida up in the air, resulting in a torturous month-long cliffhanger. It's episodes like these, where the show wears its soap opera influences on its sleeve, that allows us to eat up every dramatic moment. And some had learned the hardest lesson of all. That life is always fragile and very often unfair. Number eight, Brie abandons Andrew. See my pants, I can't. Now we're even. As much as Brie has always wanted the perfect domestic life, her misbehaving son, Andrew, was always a thorn in her side. Though on the exterior she seems like one of the sweetest housewives, her dark side really came out in this moment. Why do we stop here? We have half a tank left. There's so many things I want to say to you, Andrew. After Andrew hooks up with the man she's seeing, she decides to take him on a college road trip. Thing is, she stops at a gas station and abandons her son there. Wait, you're, gonna, you're gonna leave me out here in the middle of nowhere? I noticed a bus stop about a mile back. You can go anywhere you want. This brutal moment may be one of the series' darkest, and Bree seeing Andrew disappear in her rear window is absolutely heartbreaking. Fortunately, they would later patch things up, but it would be a long road to forgiveness for Bree. Number seven, Lynette's diagnosis. Though Lynette and Tom have one of the show's most consistently stable relationships, one of its most major tests came when Lynette began to have feelings for an employee, Rick. You had lunch with Rick. You're damn right I did. I saw the security tape. What was I supposed to do? Pretend that nothing was going on? Nothing was going on! When this escalates into an explosive argument, the two visit the doctor. And just as they're about to start a major fight, the doctor drops a bomb on them. Lynette likely has lymphoma. It could be lymphoma. We're hoping the biopsy will rule that out. It's a fleeting but beautiful moment as Tom decides to let go of their petty arguments and support his wife in her diagnosis. This also sets off one of Lynette's most dramatic storylines as she examines the true value of life while fighting to keep her own. Will I be around to watch my children grow up? Number six, Carlos kills Alejandro. Oh my God. Are you all right? That's my stepfather. In the show's seventh season, Gabby faced her most personal storyline yet. After revealing that her stepfather had been abusive, the menacing figure returns to her life. I remember you getting drunk on tequila. Just as he approached her at a vulnerable moment, Carlos sneaks up and gives him a good whack with a candlestick. Though he didn't intend to kill the villain, he drops dead. <laughs> as it turns out, he never actually had a gun, meaning Carlos killed an unarmed man. Along with the rest of the housewives, Gabby agrees to help Carlos cover up the killing, an event that sets in motion the main plot for the final season, sending each of these characters to a very dark place. I killed the son of a bitch who hurt my wife. If I have to go to prison, I will. That's not gonna happen. Number five, the shooting. After Carolyn Bigsby discovered that her husband was having an affair, she made a decision that rocked Wisteria Lane. Everybody down. Nobody goes anywhere. Upon shooting her husband at his grocery store, she proceeds to hold the rest of the store, including Lynette, Edie, Nora, and Julie, hostage. The terrifying situation occupies the second half of the episode and is highlighted by impeccable performances from Laurie Metcalf and Felicity Huffman. She tried to seduce my husband, so... She put the moves on your husband? 
Why didn't you say so? In the end, Nora and Carolyn end up dead, and each of the housewives are left with hefty baggage to grapple with in the wake of the harrowing encounter. As an all-too-real situation, the comedy takes a back seat, resulting in a disturbingly effective episode. Kill was the only good thing that I've ever done in my whole life. I need you to really take really good care of her. Okay. Number four, Time Jump. Just as the show was hitting a narrative lull in its fourth season, the writers made the bold choice to jump five years into the future. What the hell are you doing? Hey, Mommy, we're playing fashion model! This breathed new life into the storylines by putting the characters in unfamiliar territory, while also resulting in the show's best season finale cliffhanger. Gabby has two kids now, Porter and Preston are troublemaking teens. Again? I am so sorry, officer. We have talked to Porter till we're blue in the face. It's like he's determined to go back to juvenile hall. Honey, it wasn't Porter this time. They arrested Preston. Bree is semi-famous. I've also got the woman from the New York Times on the phone. She wants to do the interview now. And where the hell is Mike? And we had to wait all summer to get these questions answered. This moment was Desperate Housewives at its best, teasing us with future storylines and leaving us with burning questions. Honey, I'm home. Did you miss me? You know I did. Number three, Mary Alice takes her own life. Normally, there's never anything newsworthy about my life, but that all changed last Thursday. This was the moment that started it all. In the very first scene of the pilot episode, Mary Alice narrates her average day up until the moment that she picks up a gun and shoots herself in the head, seemingly for no reason. This kicked off the intriguing and dark mystery that carried the show through its first season, and made it clear from the get-go that the perfect little street of Wisteria Lane was all a facade. <coughs> it was soapy, dramatic, and everything we would come to expect from a show filled with crazy twists and turns. What does this mean? Number two, Mike dies. Mike had always been one of the show's more complicated characters, struggling to smother some of his darker tendencies. Hello. Is that a gun in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Oh my god, it is a gun. This makes it fitting that his anti-heroic qualities are what led to his ultimate demise. When it was teased that a major character would die in one of the series' final episodes, there was a grave feeling that Mike would go down after violently confronting a lone shark. Delfino! In the end, he shares one final poignant moment with Susan before being shot in the chest and dying in her arms. After years of will they, won't they, the end of their love ended up being more tragic than we ever could have imagined. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Edie Dies This moment may not have been shocking if you were following the series production drama, as Nicolette Sheridan didn't have the greatest relationship with showrunner Mark Cherry. Nobody gave it to me. I did research. You think I'm too stupid to do research? Still, the killing off of one of the main housewives remains one of the biggest TV deaths in the early 21st century. After discovering the truth about her new husband and frantically escaping the house, a perfect storm of events causes Edie to crash into a pole and electrocute herself as she steps into the puddle below her car. <coughs> As the other residents look back on her life, they realize as pesky as she could be, she had a lot of heart and made all of their lives richer. With all my neighbors surrounding me, I took my last breath. The good news? I died just like I lived, as the complete and utter center of attention. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.